Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records, and I want to wish John McLaughlin a happy 81st birthday. John uh, was born in 1942 in England. He uh, is a guitar player, started taking lessons at the age of 11, inspired by people like Django Reinhardt. Um, grew up in that early 60s blues scene in, in England. You know, uh, Alexis Corner played with those guys, played with the Graham Bond uh, organization, gave Jimmy Page guitar lessons in the very early 60s, was in the session scene, also worked in, in, in groups with Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker pre-Cream. So he was in the blues scene like most of the guys were, but instead of fully realizing that and going on to do what Jeff Beck and Page and Clapton did, he gravitated towards jazz and really became, you know, one of the greatest players and still to this day in the history of guitar and jazz. Jeff Beck said in 2010 he was the greatest, that McLaughlin was the greatest guitar player alive. Pat Metheny has said he's one of the greatest players in the world. Tony Williams, drummer for Miles Davis, uh, brought him over from England to work on some sessions, at which point Miles Davis gets wind of this great guitar player, and in 1969, In a Silent Way comes out. And, you know, this album featuring uh, remnants of the last, of the second great quintet, you know, also has... Joe Zawinul on it, and Chick Corea, and again, Tony Williams and Dave Holland, but featuring guitar. Really only the second album from Miles to feature guitar after a brief uh, sighting of George Benson on, on, on a previous record. You know, followed up in 1970 by the classic and seminal, really a silent way is also, but Bitches Brew, also featuring John McLaughlin. In the meantime, Tony Williams has formed a band called Lifetime. Tony Williams' Lifetime's first record called Emergency uh, features McLaughlin. And the second record features Jack Bruce on bass. You know, post-Cream. McLaughlin sticks around with Miles through albums like A Tribute to Jack Johnson. Right? And the live album from Washington, D.C., from the cellar door, Live Evil. You know, again, just fantastic lineups here. Uh, a ferocious jazz fusion. You know, working with Miles is a rite of passage for a lot of these guys. And if you look at the family tree of of bands that have come out of the Miles Davis scene. It's incredible. Return to Forever, uh, you know, Weather Report, Herbie Hancock ultimately forms the Headhunters. Um, well, he tells John in 1971, you need to go out and do your own thing. And after reaching out to um, Billy Cobham, and working with Billy Cobham for 10 days just as a duo, in comes John Hammer, in comes Rick Laird, in comes Jerry Goodman on violin, and you have the first Mahavishnu Orchestra record in 1971. You know, uh, songs like The New Word Race and Vital Transformation and Awakening you know, you know, is another just great song. This is really the defining moment, in my opinion, of what would become 70s jazz fusion. And then you had the three headed monster of Mahavishnu Orchestra, Return to Forever, ultimately, and, and Weather Report. And these bands were filling large arenas. Not large arenas as much as large theaters. Maybe they would open up for, you know, a Uriah Heep or a, a Jethro Tull or a band uh, bigger than them, but really steal the show. You know, in some cases, 
opening up for bands that, you know, everybody's leaving after they play. That's how how powerful they were live. I mean, Billy Cobham on drums alone is a powerhouse. Jan Hammer is coming into his own, experimenting with synths that are that are new to the scene, and John McLaughlin on guitar, and many times with a double neck Gibson. Did Jimmy Page get the double neck Gibson idea from 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 John McLaughlin? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's Jimmy Page bows at the feet of 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 his teacher, Mahu Vishnu. You know, Chim Noy is an Indian spiritual leader who gave John the name Mahu Vishnu, and that's where he comes up with the band name Mahu Vishnu Orchestra. The second record is equally as great. It's called Birds of Fire, again featuring the same cast of characters. You know, songs on here. Um, you know, like the title track, the song Miles Beyond is unbelievable. Sapphire Bullets of Pure Love. You know, these are special records. This is not for the faint of heart. These are very intense records that do take time to, to, to slow down in your mind because this is full throttle jazz fusion. Um, a lineup change featuring Cobham leaving, Narada Michael Walden coming in. You have... Visions of the Emerald Beyond in 1973. Um, prior to that, Apocalypse live album. And there's another live album that really kind of marked the, um, you know, what would have been a th third album of the original lineup, but the band breaks up. And really, you know, they, they there's so much in those first few albums to, to check out. And again, this is popular music. This isn't just jazz in small little clubs. This is filling buildings up with young people who this is their jazz. This is this is the way that their generation is going to understand jazz. And there's no lyrics and there's no singing. It's instrumental music um, deconstructed out of you know, normal rhythms in the sense that it's it's dissonant and it is you know if he wanted to play perfect blues like clapton or, or jeff beck or, or or you know in some cases jimmy page he could but he chooses to be avant-garde and a little free in his playing he gets together uh with carlos santana in 1973 for love devotion surrender this features a, a love supreme cover of a, of a famous John Coltrane song, uh, Namia, uh, Meditation. You know, this album also features Mike Shreve on drums from Santana's band. Uh, Billy Cobham is also on this. These, this is mandatory, mandatory records. And again, this is not for the faint of heart. Uh, after, after, uh, Mahu Vishnu breaks up. He gets into Indian classical music, more acoustic music, with tabla playing by Zakir uh, Hussain and other players. When I saw Shotki was the name of that band in 1999, I got to the theater and they were all sitting Indian style on on uh, rugs and with acoustic instruments and tabulas and 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 and, and, and Indian drums, and it was. It blew my mind. I, I didn't know, you know, similar to when in the early 90s I got into Mahavishnu, I wasn't sure how to handle it because it was so outside of my comfort zone. It's literally taken me 30 years to understand and for it to slow down my mind. Um, same with Schottky, but it's mesmerizing. The playing's great. He does solo albums like Electric Guitarist in the later 70s. You know, again, filled with cast of characters like Chick Corea and Stanley Clark and De Jack Dejanet on one tune. Jack Bruce and Tony Williams as a trio on the second song. You know, Cobham and McLaughlin on the third. You know, just Jerry Goodman and Cobham. Again, a little bit of a Mahavishnu return. Narada Michael Walding and Tom Costner on keyboards. Tom Costner, famous for that mid 70s Santana era with like Moonflower. Think about the, those keyboards. Da, 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 da. Love that Tom Coster from Detroit. 
Uh, Alfonso Johnson and Tony Smith on drums. Dave Sanborn from St. Louis, Missouri. Kirkwood, Missouri, to be specific. This is mandatory stuff. In 1980, I believe, this masterpiece comes out. Now, this is a more flamenco, more acoustic guitar with Paco de Lucia and Al Di Miola and John McLaughlin on a Friday night in San Francisco. This is one of the best-selling jazz records in the history of music, and, and it really borders into flamenco and classical um, because John's, again, capable of more than just the blues. He left that for the, for the Claptons. He's capable of more than just jazz. He can play Indian classical. He can play classical. He can play folk. He can play whatever he wants to. And again, I don't want to say it's a shame because he, that he's not a household name. He is a household name to those who know. I want to wish him a happy birthday. I was fortunate enough to see him on, on four different occasions and in four different decades and most recently playing a Love Supreme and Vital Transformation in Los Angeles with Santana's band. Um, you know, you can, again, peel back the onion of, of, of what your comfort zone is and, and what music is and what jazz is and find these guys um, and there's still things I don't know about his early solo career and some of the Schottky stuff. You know, there's this immense amount of material. Uh, the stuff he did with uh, Gary Husband on keyboards and drums. Um, he's worked with Jimmy Herring from Widespread Panic and, um, you know, <laughs> Aquarium Rescue Unit on some on Mahu Vishnu stuff. Anyway, that's my show for today. Happy birthday, John McLaughlin. You're 81. You're a legend, and you're one of the greatest players of all time. Hope to see you soon, and, and, and take a look at my channel and subscribe if you like. Peace out. See you.